goes without saying, but I'm going to say it again anyway. That was an amazing singing service. Uh, it, I would say, and that casts further light where Peter says, I'm going to stir up your mind, your pure mind, by way of remembrance. This is exactly why we have these classes. I know me, I need to be reminded on how to do certain things. It's good to have training sessions. That's exactly. This is exact proof of how that works. That was amazing. This afternoon, the few moments I don't have anymore, <laughs> I would like to discuss a verse with you regarding baptism. This subject has been coming up fairly regularly over the last few months, and rightfully so, but I want to approach it from a different angle. Uh, one that I have been approached with as far as question for those who don't believe the gospel, who would not accept it as God's power to save, who don't live by it. But this verse is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Referencing the days of Noah and the great flood of long ago, he continues there in verse 21, says the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the res resurrection of Jesus Christ. The contention that some have, and I would point out that, I don't know about most, but quite a few many in the religious, religious world today Specifically, those who do not believe in baptism being essential for salvation will cite this verse saying that baptism is only for your conscience' sake. Only for your conscience' sake. After all, it is the answer of a good conscience toward God. So if, if my conscience is relieved, I don't have to be baptized. That's the angle that they approach it. Well, they employ similar reasoning in passages such as Mark chapter 16. Particularly verse 16. He that believeth is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Well, I got up from the pew and I walked over here and I stood in front of the podium. But if I never get up, I will never get to that podium. You see where the issue and their, lead, their logic falls apart? They say that since he that believeth not shall be damned, believe only. They fail to realize, and I would say dishonestly point out, they say that baptism is not essential because primarily they're dishonest. They're misapplying Scripture. If you never take, take the first steps, you'll never arrive at the, the journey's end. That's the point there. You must believe and eventually be baptized in order to be saved. Now, I don't want to minimize the conscience, especially regarding one's salvation. I think I've mentioned it at least once or twice here, but in 2003, I went to a Bible camp. And uh, this was the first time that me and my siblings had been to a Bible camp. And one afternoon, I guess it, I say afternoon, it was more evening, it was dark. Some of my cabin mates were asking me, why aren't you a Christian? Because I wasn't. Well, the typical teenage answer is, I don't know. Well, are your parents Christians? Me and my ignorance, I said yes. Well, do you do this? Do you do that? And I, I answered accordingly. And the guy asked, well, why don't you just go be baptized? No, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, our, our uh, cabin leader comes in, and this, this young fellow that was talking to me says, hey, we're going to have a Christian tomorrow. And they asked, well, why not now? Huh, okay. Nobody asked where I felt, where I thought, where my knowledge in the scriptures was. We got everybody together and go, went and gathered by the swimming pool. And I got baptized. 
Well, nobody ever questioned my belief, never questioned where I was in the scriptures. They just did it. And here I thought, wow, I'm a Christian. But I didn't feel any different. Now, the next few years, I lived as if I was a Christian. But it wasn't until the summer of 2008 where I got to thinking. My conscience, you see, was grinding on me. Why did I actually get baptized? I couldn't think of a legitimate reason other than peer pressure. Hey, why not now? So conscience is a good thing. That conscience that God gave me stirred my mind up. Are you actually saved? If you died tomorrow, five years from now, even tonight, because I was in Cameron when I was thinking about this, if I died right now, where am I going? And uh, by the time college started, because this was the summer I was working at Alcoa in Rockdale, by the time summer ended and college began and I started attending with Fish Hatchery once again, I made the decision to go be baptized for the right reason, because I wanted to, because my knowledge of the scriptures had increased. But why did I be get baptized? Well, because the like figure wearing to even baptism doth also now save us. That parenthetical statement does not negate the statement made prior. Parenthetical statements are meant to enhance that statement made prior, to add a central or crucial knowledge to that statement, not negate it. Otherwise, you have confusion here. You have nonsense. Baptism is essential, but it's only if you have a bad conscience toward God. That makes no sense. And we know that God is not the author of confusion. But you see, those who employ this type of logic, as we pointed out in other instances, they're guilty of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. It says, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, not impossible, but hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. We're not talking about sleeping. We're not talking about an afternoon nap. That word rest there means torture, specifically with the rack. They're torturing the scriptures. They're doing the scriptures an injustice. So this false idea, this false doctrine of the inessentialness of baptism, whatever you want to call it, is doing harm to the scriptures. They're resting, they're twisting, they're torturing God's word. And ultimately that only brings about their own destruction. Because no matter what kind of false doctrine it is, the only thing that a false doctrine will bring is a devil's hell, if believed in practice. Now we know specifically from this verse, but as well as others, I think of the eunuch in Acts chapter 8, when taught the gospel, he says, here's water. Why don't we stop? Why don't I be baptized? And what happened? They both went down to the water. The eunuch was baptized. From that point forward, he was a Christian. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, if you have that need this afternoon, if you're not a Christian, if you've not been baptized for the mission of your sins, why not take those steps this, this afternoon? We have the next few moments to offer that opportunity. Or if as a child of God, Maybe you slipped back into the world. Maybe, well, anything could happen. We're all humans. We do make mistakes from time to time. Why not put those sins away through repentance and prayer? We'll pray with you and for you so that you might be restored with your Creator. Whichever of these might be your need, please make it known as together we stand and sing.